Okay, so moving on with part three, we're going to need to set up the geometry here uh, before we actually start making the materials because I want to be able to set this up uh, so that certain parts of this MP3 player will actually reflect off of uh, a couple of uh, reflection domes that we're going to create for this. So the first thing we want to do is click on the MP3 player, go to polygon mode, and we're just going to be splitting off some geometry here and we're going to be splitting it off into painted surfaces and the second group will be chrome so I'm going to hit UL for the loop selection I'm going to select that inner loop I'm going to hit UF for the fill selection and shift click the rear I'm going to go to function split now this is split off our geometry but also while splitting it, it also duplicated it. So we're going to need to determine which one of these is the rear plate and which one of these is the main object with the rear plate still attached. So let's hide this. Okay, so this one here is the new rear plate. So let's double click that and call that rear plate because we don't need to be confused. Hide that. Now we'll unhide the MP3 player and we need to delete that rear plate. So now we deleted it, we need to go into point mode. We need to clean up those points, so make sure you don't have any selected. Go to function, optimize, and that's all we need to do for that. Go back to polygon mode, and now we need to separate this lip, this chrome lip that we've made. So what I'm gonna do is get the loop selection tool again, I'm going to go into this corner. Whoa, I went way too far that time. Okay, going to grab that inner inside loop. Come to the back here. Going to grab that rear most uh, loop of polygons there. I'm going to hit UF to go back to the fill selection and I'm just going to shift click to fill that in for the uh, chrome loop function split so let's hide that and see what we got okay need to click here and call this lip hide it go back to the main mp3 player here we're going to need to delete that duplicated chrome lip. All right, that's fine. You can see we've got a bit of a lip there. Uh, that's not an issue. We'll just leave it the way it is. Go into point mode, optimize that, and clean up those unwanted points. All right, that looks pretty good. So what we need to do now is uh, set this up because if you notice if we unhide all of this and turn the hypernerve on only one object which is the one directly underneath the hypernerve is being affected by it so in order to get this to work properly we need to add another hypernerve and we're gonna call this one chrome anything that's gonna be chrome is gonna go in there and we're gonna call this one paint and basically that means any painted surface will be in there so the rear plate is going to be paint. We know that the lip is chrome, so we'll take that up to chrome. This here is the front, so I'm just going to rename that to front. That's going to be in there as well. So what we need to do now is fix this problem here because you can see the front is not being uh, affected by the hypernerve, only the rear plate is. And the reason for that is because we need to add a null object do the paint hypernerve and then drag these two objects and any more objects that we may be adding at a later time will go into that null object. Now you can see all of those are being affected by the hypernerve. Okay, so now we need to go through here and delete some of these selection tags for the chrome lip. It's all going to be chrome. We don't need any of those tags. We need to go to the front and we're going to need the screen. We need the YouTube label. The front paint, we don't need. The chrome, we don't need. For the rear plate, we're just going to delete all of those. All right, so let's go and set up our reflection sphere. 
create a sphere primitive, take the radius to about 6,000, segments to about 45. Let's create a new material here by going File, New Material, and in the Luminance channel I'm going to activate that. I'm going to turn off Color and Specular, and with the Luminance here I'm going to load an image from my drive. And what I'm what I'm basically using here is an HDR image that I've desaturated in Photoshop. Now, if you go on uh, Google, you, I'm sure you can find a bunch of free HDRs if that's what you'd like to use. However, you can also use a JPEG image uh, or just basically whatever you want. You could just throw up some noise onto your sphere if you wanted to. Uh, but for this, I'm going to use this kitchen probe that I found online. Okay, now we need to drag this over to our sphere. You can see now we've got the HDR showing up on the sphere. And the reason why we're doing this is because I'm going to just turn the sphere off real quick and just to sh demonstrate this for you. I'm going to create another new material. This is going to be chrome. The color I'm going to set to 10%. Reflection, turn it at 100. That'll be our chrome. I'm going to drag this here over to the chrome lip. Okay, you can see it turn black. And that's fine, that's not an issue, but when we do a preview render, you can see here that it is black and it's not chrome. And the reason for that is, well, look at the environment. It's all pitch black. There's nothing there. So we have to put something there in order for these reflective materials to grab grab an image to, you know, to, uh, in order to show up as a reflection. It has to grab hold of something. So we're going to turn the sphere back on, do another preview render, and now you can see we're getting reflection although it looks kind of cruddy so we need to adjust this HDR image so I'm going to go into the image here I'm going to click it and I'm going to adjust the black point I'm going to take that up and that's a bit too far maybe about 0.6 and the white point I think I'm going to adjust to about 1.15 now we do another preview render and now you can see our chrome is looking a lot better I don't want to see that ugly looking thing in the background because it's actually uh, not very pleasant looking to look at on a spherical map like that. You can see it looks rather distorted and just ugly. It doesn't add to the scene. So I'm going to right click on the sphere, go to Cinema 4D Tags, Compositing. And in the tag here we're going to disable Cast Shadow, Receive Shadow, and Scene by Camera. And now I'm just going to turn that off in the viewport. And there you go. Okay, got that set up, looking pretty good. Now we need to go to the back and set up a black material for the back. Let's go new material. The color, I'm going to take all of this to 15. Reflection channel, I'm going to turn that on, and that's too much. We need to go to the Fresnel shader go into it and take the black slider handle here and double click it and instead of having a pure black we need to take this up to something like a darker gray and that will give us a bit more reflection there in the center so let's go to specular I'm going to change it to metal I'm going to take the width up to 80 and the height to about 125 go to the illumination chat change it to blend I'm going to drag that over here to the rear plate and if we do another preview render, now you can see we've got this ugly reflection going on. Uh, the way to fix that is to go into the compositing tag for the sphere, go to the exclusion tab, make sure the mode is set to exclude, and we want to exclude any painted surface from being uh, from picking up this reflection sphere. So let's grab this paint hypernerb and just drag the whole thing down into here. Do another preview render, and now you can see it's not picking it up. Uh, we're actually going to make something else that's going to uh, work for those painted surfaces so we can see them without throwing up all those uh, ugly looking reflections. Okay, so that concludes this part three. Uh, in the next part, we'll get started with some texturing for the front. We'll set up the reflection sphere uh, for the painted surfaces and uh, start applying some labels. So, thank you for watching.